Hi there, I'm Father Matt Face. And I don't even know who I am in this world. Well, that's a little dramatic. That's what we're going to talk about today. Oh, perfect. This is We Should Pray, the podcast. Where we talk about uh, how prayer can transform tragedy into comedy. <laughs> like the tragedy of me trying to get those lines right. We're doing it now. It's yeah. happening. Oh, man. Here we go. Vanity, vanities. We should pray. We should pray. Want to find yourself? Lose yourself. Wait, what's that mean? That means if you want to be unique, yeah, original, I do exactly who you're meant to be. Absolutely, you have to not grasp at those things. But then, how do you get those things? You just you give yourself away. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that is going to be a journey. <laughs> a journey. That sounds like it'd be quite a journey. A journey that we're going to take in this podcast. All right. Uh, starting with the challenges of losing oneself. Sounds like there would be some big challenges there. Like particularly in our experience. Yes, of course. And then uh, and we could pray about it. Yep. And important. then we could see if after we pray, there's anything good to talk about. I, su- I suspect there would be. <sighs> so much faith. Wow. Why don't you just start? <laughs> take, it, take it away. All right. Um, I really want to be me. I like. Is I like, that a pop song? Um, probably. I'm not quoting a pop song, but. It could be. I'm sure it is. No, I mean. Sorry, I'm just writing songs right now. Yeah, mm. always. One, did you want? This is uh, disconcerting mm. to me. No, um, mm. I, uh, I, I mean this without like pride, but I, I like me. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, I trust I was created as I am on purpose by God. Right. So, if he was going to create me differently. He would have. He's got that. This is power. such a song. This is I, I trust <laughs> that I am the self that you made. Free to be me. Made me to be. This is... Free to be, free to be. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> if I'm tempted <laughs> to change my life, just gotta be free to be me. Yeah. <clears throat> Father Matt. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> to you, no. Um, uh, okay. That 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 there is that um, that goodness and beauty in in me in all of us, right? But I'm, yeah. I'm me. Mm-hmm. Um, so trying to discover who I am, who I who I am made to be, right? Um, I think is fun and exciting and super embarrassing mm-hmm. most of the time. Um, but that's been that's been a great journey so far, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, I've got a lot of stories to tell about all of that. But um, I've I've really loved uh, that experience interacting with um, my religious community. Mm-hmm. This doesn't sound problematic to me. No, Mm-mm. you're like good self esteem. Yeah, hanging with my religious community. Yeah, what? Writing bop songs. Yeah, it's not a problem at all. Cool. Are there problems to this? Well, I mean, I could talk about mine, but it's your turn. Yeah. I feel like there are, though. I've met your community. <laughs> yes. All right, look. You know me. I'm not good at talking about problems first. I got to circle. Okay, yeah. All right, I'll cut to the chase. I'm meandering too much. Yes, so in, in the community, in mm-hmm. our community... Um, <laughs> there, it. I, I love. I love my community. Yes. And, and, and the, the the guys in it. They're my brothers. Um, uh huh. And uh, many of them are uh, really um, weird. Yeah. But, but like they are definitely. Yeah. Like they're like you. 
There are a lot. But like lots of them, and they have like different personality types. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of different personality types <laughs> and ways of expressing everything. <laughs> um, and, but, the, okay, so my, my, my favorite, one of my favorite um, examples of this mm-hmm. was when I was in my first assignment, I was at a parish in Portland, Oregon. Which is, I mean, Portland to start. To, to begin with keep portland weird it is weird so yeah so you're in portland i'm in portland our community in portland um our, our local community there was there was over 20 of us professed um, religious living in the same place no because you and you were at the parish with yeah. father john yeah and they was were, everybody else in the same place though um more or less yeah okay there were a, a few a few outliers but for the most part we were there and we'd gather together for community nights um, every week every week oh yeah yeah and, oh, yeah, yeah. And to to meet many of these guys who I'd not met before, who'd been living in Portland, keep Portland weird, um, for for many years. Um, it was um, sometimes and, weird. And so you get together because okay, I've been to one of these community nights with you, and and you, I was confused because I thought we were having like dinner, but it was more of a like get together with like some cheese so i'm like how oh. much cheese should i eat because you, there's like cheese and grapes and wine i'm like well i'm not gonna just, like, just drink about, like how what do i do and then later you're like oh there's gonna be a meal I'm like, oh this is yeah, it's a progressive you, yeah thing. there's always the food before you eat the food uh-huh. at a at a holy cross social uh-huh. yeah and there's always cheese cubes there's gotta be, there's gotta be cheese. <laughs> that's like the one the one consistent piece in all of our communities is cheese cubes at the soirees okay. Um, it's good, but you said cheese cubes uniformity. <laughs> <laughs> you said that know your place. Okay, but here's like here here you are living in Portland, mm-hmm. and you're like, what? Well, how old are you at the time? Like twenty eight? Yeah, twenty nine. Going to community night every week mm-hmm. with this group of men who are like you're the youngest the by youngest. like forty years. Well, by the average would have been yeah. Okay. <laughs> There are a few guys closer to my age, but yeah. Okay. And so, but starting with mass, right? Yep. We'd, on the, um, on our Thursday community nights, we'd, we'd start with mass. And uh, when I first got there, I was a deacon. So I would deacon all of the masses, mm-hmm. um, which was an awesome experience. So you'd serve at like the altar? Yeah. While, some, while one of the other Holy Cross religious was saying mass, yeah, celebrating yeah. mass. So the other the other CSC would would preach and preside, um, and it was it was just our community. Sometimes there'd be other guests, but for the most part, the, the congregation was just us, right? So it's a unique position to be preaching and presiding because you're it's really just to uh, to your own brothers. Um, and I learned so much about like priesthood and presiding at mass from deaconing there. Oh yeah, yeah. By by seeing examples of things, I didn't want to do. <laughs> um, like what? Well, I mean, this is like a bunch of priests that were taken with um, certain things in the mass, which are fine. They were they were oh, always yeah. valid. Yeah, yeah. I see uh, what you mean. Rarely listed. Yeah. Um, but what about the dynamic that you were telling telling me about? Like, here's here's one of someone from your community. Yeah. Preaching to your community. Mm. Yeah, so that like was always, how is how is that like brothers and yeah that was always fascinating because brothers it, brothers it, it, often it, it came out in um, in like one of two major ways they would tailor it specifically to the fact that it was just our community mm-hmm. or they would ignore that piece entirely and just like preach as if it was a normal mass <laughs> of like you know like a like a parish of lay people. <laughs> And, and those were always at your homes with your families yeah. at your jobs. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, like these points are true, but like, then me, you know, teenagers today. Yeah. Um, so that was always funny when it would be like just a generic, yeah, presentation. But then when it was just the community, yeah, those those could often go in two very direct ways. Okay, of um, like passive aggressive. <laughs> Like corrections for bits of community <laughs> life. Like, so I have a list. That <laughs> and to those who leave their dishes out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for some guys, that's that's like 
how they <laughs> got out their gripes was when they were preaching to the community. And that was always awkward, but <laughs> funny. Um, especially when, like, I'd agree with them, like, yeah, that's got to, or like, oh, man, no, like, you're wrong. So, um, like, gripes about, about the community or, um, and that would also be, like, sometimes, like, veiled jabs at, like, you know, people they didn't maybe think were, like, working hard enough at their job <laughs> or, like, living community life well enough. I mean, that often came up. You know what we all really need to do here is be a little more selfless. <laughs> Especially with Staff the last meetings. of the meat at breakfast. <laughs> uh, what was the other direction? Um, and the other, um, which was really edifying... Um, was uh, was when it was this place of like, all right, brothers, like here we are together. We're listening to God's word. How does this affect us? Like, how can we, how can we as a community, who like already know a bunch of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And like we know the right answers, but like how can we let this speak to our hearts? Um, like you know, intellectually, so you don't have to like hammer it home again. Yeah. But how do you like integrate it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and like those those moments. Those, those those homilies, I think, were always so, um, I mean, for me, so much more impactful, right? Because it's... Um, this getting, is, getting it still doesn't sound that problematic to me. Yeah. So, I, like, I like to not look at problems. I know. <laughs> All right. Let me bring some up. Um, we refer to your community as a cast of characters. Oh, boy, they are. Um, and, like, I just... It's just not normal. Like, it wouldn't be... I can't think of, like, a situation in, 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 where this would be normal for, like late 20 year old man to like just hang out with these like older <laughs> just like a lot they just seem a lot older yeah men it's like kind of like you said that you kind of, some of them you think of as like your uncles right even like your brothers yeah. but like yeah no more like an uncle definitely more like uncles yeah um because it, it was um it was it was difficult in that sense of like most of these guys are quite a bit older than me quite a bit more experience but also like raised in a different time yeah, right like raised in a different formation, formation program in holy cross and like their their view of of um of so much stuff was different like mm -hmm. how much we should wear the habit or how much we should wear clerics or mm -hmm. i mean you know p pieces like that even um it was just different right they were formed in different ways and those um those gaps were difficult yeah mm -hmm. and so um you know you started out saying like you want to be yourself and like figure out what that means. Mm -hmm. And so for thinking about like losing yourself, um, how does, okay, let's, I'm going to go to like a painful place. Are you with me? You're like, uh, uh -uh. tentatively. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, listen, what? we'll tie it together at the end. I mean, it's fine. It's okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I trust you. Let's and go. so, all right. So, that's like religious life, right? Which is like quirky, okay? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you've promised your life to this community. So in that sense, you're you're giving yourself away. You're laying down your life, okay? Mm -hmm. You're losing your life in, a, in, in, you know, on one level. Yeah. Um, but there's also like the priesthood aspect of like priesthood. Um, it's not really super popular right now. And like <sighs> the numbers aren't really strong as far as like how many men are becoming priests mm -hmm. and like there seems to be a pro like a problem there mm -hmm. um and so and yet this is this is what you've chosen mm -hmm. and so could you speak to that like choosing that in light of even in the midst of like problems i know you're gonna want to like talk about the hopefulness i know you're going to and we, you will at the end like after we pray and stuff. Yeah. So, could you just like stay in the? Yeah, there, there it is. Stay in the problem for a second, um, because I think. Do you need me to tell you why it's important? Or are you there? No, I'm there. Okay, cool. Say it. Just put it on the table. Just lay it out there. Examples of bad priests sucks, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's more than it ever used to be or if it's just more prominent. Mm. But that sucks, right? When every time I hear another story about 
a priest in some scandal. It hurts. Um, right? Because that's, that's these guys, my brothers, either in Holy Cross or just in the priesthood, right? We're connected in that way. Um, living exactly opposite of how they're called to as priests. And that sucks. That hurts. Mm-hmm. Um, You're doing great. This is this is the stuff. Oh, well, thanks. In in my own community, we certainly have guys who've made some um, tragic mistakes. For the most part, especially the guys I interact with, it's it's not like these horrific scandals, mm-hmm. right? But even still, it is disappointing. You know, it's funny to laugh at. You know, making a, a passive aggressive comment in a homily. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is there is sadness there as well uh, yeah, yeah. when I can see my own brothers um, not going uh, not going deeper right when there's like something about themselves that they just get hung up on mm-hmm. um, and they stop mm-hmm. and I mean I've, I've seen this in in quite a few of, of my own brothers now you know where it's Either something that happened to them or or whatever else, some unexpected piece along their own life as a religious, and they mm-hmm. just kind of stop progressing mm-hmm. in in holiness or in you know zeal for ministry or whatever it might be um, and that's that's tough to see too, right, especially amongst my brothers who like are supposed to be guiding me you know yeah, I, yeah. I mean especially when I was you know right brand new like. I need you guys to guide me. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing, mm-hmm. and to have bad examples in that is, um, I mean, damaging. Yeah, that's right? tragic. That's like what we're talking about on this show. Yeah. Tragedy. Good job. All right, stay. We'll stay. We'll stay in the in the tragic, um, and talk a little bit about how how I. I've been called to lay down my life as as a wife, but especially as a mom. I like to focus on the motherhood piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but like, oh, it is hard. Because <laughs> I only want to say the good things about right. my vocation. Oh, man. <laughs> what goes around comes around. Want to find yourself? Lose yourself. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I want to talk about other people instead of myself. <laughs> oh, you got to circle. I get to circle, yeah. Okay. I'll allow some circles. So, um, recently, going back to the priesthood then. Uh, <laughs> for you? <laughs> recently, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, about like celibacy, the gift of celibacy, as we were preparing to record some of our podcast mm-hmm. episodes. And he was saying like, he was saying that he doesn't see more joy or more fruitfulness um, in the lives of priests or celibate people, those who have consecrated their lives to the Lord uh, in a vow of celibacy uh, any more than like anyone else he knows who is living a good life. Yeah, that's and tragic. Right? And this is somebody, my friend, who like knows a ton of priests and is like... <laughs> I highly involved in church life and he's just like it's yeah like I know some good priests but like I know really great married people who are in love with the Lord and I don't see any like particular love of God in those who have you know taken a vow of celibacy and I was like oh <laughs> it hurts, yeah. you know? but at the same time I've also heard from a friend of mine somewhat recently who said uh, he said there might be such a thing as a faithful marriage, but I've never seen it. And this is a friend of mine who is, again, like way involved in the church. Um, like it, he was engaged to be married. He's in his late twenties. So he's like seen, seen the, you know, um, the community life and mm-hmm. everything. And just mm-hmm. he's never seen a faithful marriage. So I think like we have a, like maybe crisis of faithfulness going on yeah. like across the board it's not just a, like a priesthood problem but it's it's in marriages and families as well 
And so um, I, I can see, I can see why <sighs> to, to some people like staying faithful and like raising a family and being generous and giving yourself completely that does not sound super appealing because it's so hard and it like I'm like I understand the word it's like dying to yourself a lot more now after having four kids um Sarah's our youngest and she's four now um so they're not none of them are in that infancy stage but especially like pregnancy and childbirth and like when they're still young and nursing oh my goodness it's just like so all-encompassing I don't like it's it's not just my body anymore. Like I'm giving my body away like at every moment, like when I'm, when I'm pregnant and, um, and then for me afterward, I'm thinking about Mercedes in particular, cause I was traveling full time by the time she was born, mm-hmm. the goddaughter. Uh, so she's six now, but when she was born, like I was on the road a lot and I was nursing her. And mm-hmm. so she would come with me. And she was super clingy, like her personality. She's so cuddly. She loves to stay close. And I remember there was one time I had like a local performance to do when we were living in California and I couldn't find a babysitter and David was going to be with our other kids. And, um, and so I just decided to bring Mercedes with me and to, to my event. Yeah. And I was going to have somebody else hold her. Mm -hmm. But she just started crying and I'm like, my motherhood instincts were like, take the baby, take the baby back, take the baby. Right. So I'm like, okay. So I just put her on my chest and I like strapped her to myself. Did you show the picture, David? Yeah. And so, and then I just like sat down at the piano, played and sang and she was like right crying against the whole my time. chest. No, actually she did not cry. Awesome. She just snuggled in and fell asleep. It was so awesome. And the only time she cried like a little bit was when I was talking about baby Jesus and it was like an Advent concert and it was like perfectly timed and people were like, that was magical. <laughs> so it was beautiful, but it's like mm-hmm. not glamorous. You know, it's it's like, mm-hmm. man, I remember, uh, like it was beautiful in the, in the in the motherhood sense, like right, that bond. But like in the context of what I was trying to do, it was like a little painful and, and nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like I remember when at, at, <laughs> when she had to retire, I had to retire um, from this duo act <laughs> um, and go out on my own instead because Mercedes got like into the music, which is good. Except she started like dancing, so she was like you know against my chest in the um, baby carrier, and she started like moving her arms and then her legs. Yeah back and forth like to the beat of the music and i remember when she first started this i was singing like a communion piece Mm -hmm. at mass and i could see people in my peripheral vision pulling out their smartphones and like taking video of this (laughs) dancing baby and i'm like this is not the point this is not what's going on right now communion's happening (laughs) besides this is my song no oh yeah communion yes that's what i meant um (laughs) So she had to stay home after that. But seriously, like even, okay, even after I would tour without Mercedes, I'm kind of trying to talk about the problem from a little bit deeper place here. Yeah. Like I had such severe, I mean, you know this, but like for mm-hmm. everyone listening, I had such severe postpartum depression after all of our daughters, all three of our daughters. So first it was 12 months. Then after Mercedes, it was 15 months. And then after Sarah, it was like, two years or something before I like felt like well, like myself again. And, um, I just remember like going for a run at one point when Mercedes was maybe close to a year old and I was, it was like the sun was shining. Running is one of my favorite things. Normally I would feel so happy and just like all the endorphins, which I know you don't really believe in, but I Haven't believe really in really experience for yourself. Yeah, they don't um, look at me. But I normally feel like so great when I'm working out and I was like trying to lift my soul in prayer and I just was saying to the Lord, like I, I can't, I don't have a sense for like what I'm feeling, what, what, where my thoughts are, like how can I offer myself to you when I feel like I don't even know where, where I am. Mm-hmm. And that was so... I, I just felt so lost 
Um, and so I, I guess that's the point of what we're talking about here. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> One second. I just <laughs> look at our notes. It says electric pump. I'm like electric pump. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, I love airplane stories. I miss being on airplanes. Yeah. I was on an airplane on the aisle because the aisle is the best spot. If you can get any spot, get the aisle spot because then you can get out easily. You can say hi to the people who are going by. You can get a drink. No, it's the clearly the window seat. <sighs> but you have to get the window seat where the window well lines up with your shoulder. Yeah, you taught me that trick. Yeah, you don't want the window seat where the window is offset and it's just the plastic That's because then there's like you're leaning against the wall instead of into the, into window. the window yeah yeah anyway so sitting on the aisle because that's the best and then i <laughs> i heard this sound it was like a robotic like methodical it was like something on the plane is breaking and i was like I, it wasn't like musical but it's kind of like a beat and i'm like what is going on and then there was also a light shining forth from under the seat not under my seat but the seat next to me so the middle spot and i just didn't really ask questions because a lot of times i'm just not curious so <laughs> and then eventually this mysterious light and, and bizarre mechanical noise on the plane <laughs> oh nothing i know yeah i just mind my own business right and then the lady next to me eventually it was like i'm so sorry i just i just have to pump because my baby's not here and like you, I'm like saying no more. I get it. And like so, she was like covered. Like I couldn't tell that she was like pumping out breast milk into this machine in with the, the, in the light. Middle seat of a plane. In the middle seat of the plane. And like it follows you. The motherhood does. You don't like leave the motherhood at the door. You're just like still caring for the baby across the country. You're like in the plane away. It doesn't stop. We should pray. <laughs> we should pray. You know, like when you when you don't have strength to pray for your on your own behalf, and you ask the saints to pray for you instead. You, yes. like, you do it. All right, let's do that. Okay. Getting really into this. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us. Saint Michael. Pray for us. Holy Angels of God. Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Pray for us. Saint Andrew. Pray for us. Saint John. Pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Saint Stephen. Pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence. Pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Felicity. Pray for us. Saint Agnes. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Athanasius. Pray for us. Saint Basil. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Catherine. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Pray for us. Saint Andre Bassett. Pray for us. Saint Juan Diego. Pray for us. Saint Raphael. Pray for us. Saint Josephine Bequita. Pray for us. Saint Junipero Serra. Pray for us. Saint John Paul the Great. Pray for us. Saint Edward the Confessor. Pray for us. Saint Margaret of Scotland. Pray for us. Saint Anthony of Egypt. Pray for us. Blessed Basil Moreau. Pray for us. All holy men and women. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your coming as man. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and rising to new life. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the clergy in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in trust and peace. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Strengthen us in your service. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Son, Jesus, Son of the living God. 
Have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Let us pray. God of our ancestors, who set their hearts on you, of those who fell asleep in peace and of those who won the martyr's violent crown, we are surrounded by these witnesses as by clouds of fragrant incense. In this age, we would be counted in this communion of all the saints. Keep us always in their good and blessed company. In their midst, we make every prayer through Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Amen. Amen. This kind of reminds me of therapy. How so? <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. I was going to talk about group therapy and how group therapy is difficult it if is. you're judgmental. <laughs> because you're like, hypothetically, you're like <laughs> sitting in a group of people who have similar problems mm -hmm. as you do. Mm -hmm. And they're all just like talking about having babies and breastfeeding in their babies. And you're like, am I like these people? And then... Potentially, you can feel more depressed. <laughs> um, and then I mentioned this to you ahead of time when we were talking about this episode because I was yeah. thinking about like talking about going to therapy. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I was thinking that's kind of what our podcast is like. And I was like... Yeah. I mean... Thanks. Definitely it is. <laughs> right? Because here it is, us talking about <laughs> this stuff in our lives. And for the, for the <sighs> listeners and viewers, right? It's not like so that they can know how cool we are. Because they would, they would know instantly that, that we're not. At least I'm not. <laughs> um, just embarrassed about everything, usually. Um, but the point is, right, if, they, if listening to us talk about these things helps stir up things in their lives. But if like, it makes them feel worse because they're like, oh, no, are we like that? Well, are we weird? Am I weird? Then they're the judgmental people you were talking about. Oh. I mean, maybe. Okay, I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> you know, some of motherhood is glamorous for sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, uh, huh, huh. you're going to love this one. Can we show the picture of me at the you know where yeah. field? Uh -huh. Yes. It is I in all of my pregnant glory in Lambo Field. I, my feet were touching the same ground as Aaron Rodgers. Not only did I see him, but he saw me. It's glamorous because of the Packers. Look, the Packers are many things. <laughs> glamorous? I don't know. I don't know if the Packers are a glamorous team. <laughs> like, the, like the tradition and the, and the just like. Rustic? Party? <laughs> I think you're projecting. Simpletons? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's projecting. Now I'm projecting. <laughs> okay, so when I was at Lambo to sing, okay, just okay. I think this was an excellent audition because they didn't realize I was going to be 8 months pregnant. I mean, nor did I actually when I accepted the invitation <laughs> to sing for this <laughs> for this event. Mm -hmm. But then as it became clear as the day got closer, I was like I'm going to be super pregnant. Uh, by the time this rolls around, I was like, "Oh, I'll tell them when I get there." And so maybe they won't notice. <laughs> yeah. So I, <laughs> yeah, Aaron Rodgers saw me. How could you not? So when I got there, they're like, "Wow, do you need anything like water, a bed?" You know, <laughs> like I'm fine. This is my third child. They're like, "Okay, right." And so, but like singing the national anthem when I was pregnant, you know, like they they call me back because they're like, yeah. "Man, if you could do it, then you could sing." You could sing anytime, anytime, Monday night. anywhere. Yes, and they put me on Monday Night Football the next time. That is glamorous. But um, but I remember the the day after I sang when I was when I was so pregnant, I went back to the stadium to like pick up some paraphernalia from the gift shop, and I saw the not the owner, but the, like the manager mm -hmm. of the team, the president. That's it, the president of the Packers, Mark. Can you look that up, Mark? Murphy, David. I think it's Mark Murphy. And so I, I try to yeah. So he I talked to him. He was like coming out of a meeting 
And I'm like, it's now or never, you know, like he'll probably recognize me. So I come mm-hmm. to him like, excuse me, Mr. Murphy. I just want to say yeah. thank you. Mark, Mark Murphy. Mark Murphy. Yeah. I'm like, thank you so much for, you know, hosting me. I, I sang the national anthem last night and, you know, we, it was, we won. It was a great game. So I, I like to think I'm a part of that. I'm no small part of that. <laughs> Yes, and they were so they, they were the the players were so inspired by the national anthem, which they should be. It's, it's, yeah, it's exactly. And so, but as I'm speaking, he's like looking down at my pregnant belly, just repeatedly, just looking down, and then he starts pointing toward my belly, <laughs> and he goes, "When are you going? When are you? When? When?" And so I just said, "Anytime." <laughs> And then he just left. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then like, the I don't want to be around. The conversation was over. So now. I'm like, you know, he must be single. He must just have no concept of like, yeah, babies. like that's scary. Right. Could and happen. just like, need to, he just doesn't understand how to navigate that. So then I like looked him up later, like Mark Murphy family. Do you see any details about his family, David? Uh, just a sec. Okay. It, it turns out he's married. Does he how many kids he has? And uh, I think it was five. <laughs> Maybe he knew all too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see if I can share share the... Uh, <laughs> It, it yeah. wasn't a lack of experience. It wasn't the was lack of knowledge of what was going to happen, but rather the opposite. <laughs> he got out of there yeah. right quick. Man, this is why this is why I need to go to therapy, in part, which I have gone to. Yeah. There's like. So that you can laugh at these things. So I can laugh at them. Yeah, that's healthy. Yeah. Kinda. Oh, this is Mark Murphy, the singer. So. Uh, oh, no, yeah, I'm the I singer. Could... He's the president. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Let's count his five kids. He was either four or five, but I think it was, it was up there. Oh, okay. I think I found him. All right. He, he played football. Yeah, that makes sense. Safety? <laughs> Safety. Probably. Born in 1955. Anyway, Mark and I were good friends, so thanks for watching the podcast, Mark. Um, therapy, neural feedback, talk therapy, mm-hmm. counseling for years, right? Uh, Cause we're trying to work through this postpartum depression and mm-hmm. like make sure that it doesn't just become like permanent depression. And I think I now I found the root issue now. I think, we're, I, think I graduated the, this time. This time you found the root? <laughs> Cause so is this deeper than the other roots that you found? <laughs> yeah. I think so. This right. is a primary root. All right, like the deepest, you think this is the deepest root? I think so for this for moment. This, for this round? <laughs> no, but okay. So here's what I said, what I want to say about that. I sat down with my son Jamal, who's 10, and I kind of filled him in on my counseling journey as mm-hmm. of late. And I, and I referenced back, I'm like, you know how I was really feeling ill after the babies were born, your sisters. He's like, yeah. And I said, sometimes I still do every once in a while. And I was trying to figure out what that was about. And I think I figured it out. And I'm telling him like, a little bit about my like psyche. I'm like, I, I think I, I used to believe when I was younger that like, you know, just like just different things about myself that were just really negative or especially putting like too much um, expectation on myself. Mm-hmm. Like I thought it was like my joy, my job to make sure everybody else was joyful and like take care of their problems. And Jamal looks at me, he just starts laughing. (laughs) He's like, oh, that's a good, that's great, mom. All right. He's like, so let me get get this straight. He's like, so so maybe that's like, you wouldn't even want to have any more kids because then you'd be sad and not fulfilling your purpose. (laughs) Like something like that. (laughs) Actually, yes. It was so great, but like, how beautiful is that that we can that we could laugh yeah. at it? You know, something that has been like such a such a sorrow for me. Mm-hmm. I can share with my son, and he just laughs with joy. Like, well, yeah, that's not it. He's like, so anyway, yeah. So God created you because He loves you, and I'm like, yeah, that. So he's like, okay, great. <laughs> well, well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, 
But just to think of like what Jamal learned mm -hmm. through that, through like watching. You think about like the, the example of faithfulness that my friend, you know, said he never saw in mm -hmm. marriage. Yeah. And, and here's David like caring for me, caring for our kids, staying faithful to me when I'm like, I'm acting like a different person than when we first got married. And like, man, just to, to, to be able to, for me to experience that and then to, for me to stay in it and to stay hopeful that like God would restore my joy and bring us through that. And then to, to show our kids, like I think uh, a great example of this also with Jamal is like I was talking with Mercedes when we first moved to Arizona a few years ago. So she was like three years old, I would say. And she was actually singing. So she's in, she's in the playroom singing. Mm -hmm. Uh, see your true colors shining through. So I go in there and I'm singing with there. See your true colors. That's why I love you. Do I have to pay copyrights for this? I'll comment on it. <laughs> that's a song called True Colors. I didn't write it, but I'm going to speak about it right now. So then Jamal walks in and he says, so he says to me, True Colors. I don't like that song, mom. And I'm like, okay, why don't, why don't you like the song? So he's, he was like six, mm -hmm. six years old at this time. He said, yeah, because it's in the movie Trolls, which I hadn't seen, but I allowed them to watch smart. I don't know. So it's a kid's, it's a kid's show. Mm -hmm. Don't judge me. So the, wow. Jamal's like in the movie Trolls, the the little troll creatures are, are gray when they get sad. And when they're happy, they turn these vibrant colors. And he said, I see your true colors. That's why I love you. I love you because you're happy. <laughs> That's not love. That's deep from Lil Jimbo. I know. My goodness. And I just thought about all of those times that we discussed how sad mom was mm -hmm. and that our love for them is not based on our emotions mm -hmm. and that my, you know, dad's love for me is not based on how I feel feel only but that we can always love even if we feel sad even if we're going through hard times and like he's he's getting it you know yeah that's awesome um man i'm in, I'm in my motherhood like space right here man can we show the picture of the jumbotron please now i'll turn it back to you really we'll let you talk before the end um so <laughs> Okay, so uh, speaking of glamorous, this was this was pretty cool. It was cool to be on a jumbotron with Mercedes Baby. Yeah, and I was singing in front of like forty thousand people at this point, and thinking about like laying down my life, right? And like, what do we say? If you want to lose yourself, if you want to find yourself, if you want to find yourself, lose yourself. Mm -hmm. Any comments, David? Uh, you can just, you can see like one eye of Mercedes in this picture. <laughs> She's just peeking out. Her face is kind of yeah. pushed against she her She would just like hide in there and snuggle in. <laughs> Somebody told me when she walked into that stadium and saw us on the screen, she just said that she just started crying. And like a number of people said I would be walking around the convention center afterwards. They were like, y she was up on stage with you. I cried. You know, and other women would come up to me when I'd be on tour with Mercedes and they're like, you're showing us that women can do anything. Moms can do anything. I'm like, yeah, except find a babysitter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> almost. <was> hard thing. <laughs> <laughs> but like I wasn't trying, I wasn't trying to be original. I wasn't trying to like show what I could do. Yeah. As a this strong woman. No, I was just trying to take care of my child and like actually lay down my life for her mm -hmm. and do what was best for her. And and then somehow like that turned into this statement. Somehow that turned into like showing who I am as a person, as a wife, as a mom. And then even like later, I remember the first tour that I took without Mercedes. And I was I, I went into the airport and I was just praying that God would shine through me and um, speak to others through my presence, you know, with the Holy Spirit in me. And I was standing in line and I like got through security and this man like. He 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 kind of made eye contact with me in in the line ahead of me, and he stops me afterward. He says, "Excuse me, excuse me. I need to I need to ask you. There's just something about you. You just seem so happy, which is funny because I had postpartum depression, right? He's like, you just you're just kind of like glowing, and I just want to know, like, what were you, what were you thinking about back there? And I was like, yeah, I was thinking about my daughter. She normally travels with me, but she's not here today. And he's like, okay, uh, 
okay, I'm going to go, but that's great. <laughs> but it was such a graced moment for me to share like the love of our family yeah. and the love of motherhood and just to see how that like laying down my life like that just resulted in this beautiful resurrection, you know, mm-hmm. that I can even laugh about now. Yeah. Oh, it's so emotional. Your turn. It's so fun on this side. Come All over. Right. Priesthood. Yeah. So Religious life. we, uh, we prayed the litany of the saints and, um, forever now, anytime I, I hear the litany, um, even when it's said, I, I still hear it sung as it was sung when I was, um, laying prostrate in the church, in the Basilica of the Sacred Heart during my ordination. Mm. Um, because it, it's, it's in that, you know, there was, there were six of us ordained. So me, me and all my classmates laying down on the, on the floor, um, and like in my habit, like feeling the cross, like digging into my chest cause it was tile. <laughs> um, you know, the hard floor. Just marble floor. Yeah. Your crucifix. And I'm like you. laying on a, uh, Yeah. Um, Ouch. but, uh, <laughs> but like in that it's, it is the sense that we, we are literally laying our lives down, right? Dying to ourselves, mm-hmm. praying that the saints guide us in this, you know, and then we, um, we come up from that prayer, you know, rising again with Christ, um, and then go from there into the, um, the actual consecration, the, the uh, you know, the, the sacrament itself, the, the laying on of hands, mm-hmm. and the, the, the prayer of consecration. Um, so, I mean, every time now I, I, I hear that litany, I'm, I'm brought back to that moment, um, mm-hmm. That's awesome. which is beautiful. Uh, just just such a, such a great reminder for me of like, I have chosen to die to myself. Um, and I don't always continue to do that perfectly, right? I get selfish and distracted and whatever else sometimes, but but that is that is what I'm I'm called to do as mm-hmm. as a priest, as religious. Um, and then it was right after that that um, you know the bishop laid his hands on each of us, and then um, we all stayed kneeling on the uh, on the steps of the sanctuary, and all of the priests who were present at the ordination. Then came through in a big line and, and laid hands on all of us. Um, and in, that's a lot of priests. In Holy Cross, it's it's a lot of priests, right? It's, yeah. Um, that's when you lost it. And that's yeah. So that it, I I was just as I was kneeling there, and and it was just the, these line of of my brothers coming past and, and each laying laying their hands on my head, you know, saying some some prayer for me, some silent prayer. Um, it was just such a moving moment. I yeah, I was. Um, I mean, I was pretty tough. I was, I was weeping like yeah. crazy, like shoulders shaking, just like, I'm glad it took so long because then I was able to like get, be get composed it all out. by the end. Yeah. Um, but it was, I mean, for me, it was so many things, right? But, but especially this image of, I, I have a picture of it. Uh. I could pull up. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's not one of me just like bawling. Uh, you laying down. Okay. There you go. So let me this see. This is you laying prostrate. Yeah. Let me see if I can, uh, Remember Get before we started before. recording this episode, and I was like, "We should show a picture," and you're like, "I don't want to show." A like, picture. nah, we definitely don't need to show a picture. So I'm and glad here that that's we are. Been... All right, forgive Wanna me if there's yourself? technical difficulties. Okay, lose, lose yourself. yourself. There we go. Okay, so <laughs> here's. I think this one's Father Matt. One, two, three. Was <laughs> well, it Holy Cross Priest? Is that as when you guys are laying prostrate? Oh, yeah. it's during your ordination. Yeah. And then uh, it's either me, you or one of your brothers. Yeah. Let me go to the shot of you. As so long as it's not the one wearing cowboy boots, <laughs> that would not be me. And there no, he is. With did the, he legit oh, he wear cowboy boots oh, yeah, to the ordination? There he is with the bishop, I believe. Um, oh, lean on. Kneeling, well, was, kneeling down. Yeah. This, this is from that the yeah. promo video for the book. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then they're putting the cross on you. Yeah. So that the cross, especially that was final vows, but that was. Um, Which is before, before you became ordained to the priesthood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but okay. a similar ceremony. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So as we're kneeling there, then, and all these these priests are laying their hands, uh, I was just looking down, in um, through teary eyes. Um, I, I just kept seeing all these black shoes, mm-hmm. right? And um, 
just continuing continuing to to pause in front of me and then keep walking and then another pair of black shoes um and that um just right in my mind came this this line from our constitution the constitution is the congregation of holy cross our, our rule for our life um that talks about um our call so in constitution one our call uh or god's call rather mm -hmm. um uh, one, of the, one of the paragraphs says, we asked how we might follow, and we found many footprints on the road. A great band of men had passed this way, men who had walked side by side in the following of the Lord. They beckoned us to fall in step with them. We wanted to be part of the family they formed in order to share in their life and their work. Hmm. So I had read that constitution for like, nine years, right, as I was in formation and, like, feeling so much that sense of, like, um, slowly, but then all of a sudden, like, yes, like, I want to follow these men. I want to be a part of this this band. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing those those black shoes, I realized, too, that, like, when the last one comes through, then it was my turn to stand up uh, and just follow them. Uh, <laughs> and that was... Um, I mean, such a such a beautiful fulfillment of of this this sense from our constitutions. Um, like here are these guys who are doing their best to serve the Lord, and and they're welcome welcoming me in. Mm -hmm. And then, like, but once they're done welcome, like I just I, I'm now on the last in the line. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and there I am walking with them. Mm -hmm. So it's it's with that sense, right? That like um, even in the midst of um, seeing bad experiences of mm -hmm. community life at times um, and joyful ones and silly ones and all the things, right? Mm -hmm. But like even, even recognizing the times where our brothers, where my brothers have failed, mm -hmm. recognizing that, you know, I too fail <laughs> in many ways. Um, and there, but there is still this sense of continuing, right? And in, in each of those failures, there has to be that recognition of like, nope, do better, nope, do better, right? Um, and and to see it so many times um, in that continuing sense of of losing yourself, right? That that what's going to get me through this this hard time or this brokenness or whatever? It's mm -hmm. it's remind reminding myself I have died in Christ and I need to keep dying in Christ. So that I can be raised with him, right? And it can be Christ that's that's working in me, through me as I am. But it's not then about me. Mm -hmm. So that, that first quote from our constitutions is from Constitution 1. And um, our constitutions end, Constitution 8, the cross our hope, um, with kind of a, a flipping and then a, a continuation of this the sense of the footprints. Mm -hmm. So Constitution 8, the cross our hope in part reads, the footsteps of those men who have called us to walk in their company left deep prints as of men carrying heavy burdens, but they did not trudge, they strode, for they had the hope. They had the hope. Yeah, right? That sense of like yeah. recognizing, yeah, this is hard. Mm -hmm. um, and there might be moments where we're trudging, <laughs> but if we have the hope, the hope being the cross, the cross of Christ, um, then we can carry that burden um, striding forward. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that, you know, again, wrapped up in, in all of that, that image, but, but in all of those experiences as well. Um, I'm thankful for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you were saying, I've heard you say before, like you wouldn't choose this particular oh, group of men not. to spend the rest of your life serving alongside like on your own right yeah yeah i mean and that's yet. yeah that's certainly the case right like I, I i marvel at that often whenever i'm in a group of of cse's just thinking like what on earth would have brought this group of people together and the answer is nothing like we're just too <laughs> too disparate too weird too too distinct right like this group would have never formed one on earth but like the holy spirit has brought this group together mm -hmm. um and I, I, I know for, for a um, deep fact, deep in my, in my heart, that, that without these 
guys, without this community, like, I wouldn't be following Christ as I am. You know, I need, I need this group, these people, mm-hmm. um, this community to help me keep walking in, um, in that direction, right? To keep tr- um, yeah. striving after Christ. To call you onward. To call me onward. To, to call me humble. out. Yeah, keep me humble. Make fun of me. Like Father John with the baby monitor. Oh, Father John. Uh, I can't believe that he said that, did that. I can't believe the whole thing, I but mean, it worked. I can't believe it worked. I only believe that it happened because it's John. So, Father John, your pastor, yeah, at your assignment that you talked about in, in Portland, in Portland yeah. at the parish, he invited Mercedes and me to come visit because we came to. I came to your ordination with mm-hmm. with Mercedes, and she's just a little tiny baby, and. I was still scheduling tours and Father John's like, is this the Amanda who wanted to come give a concert? Sorry, is that okay if I talk like that when I talk like Father John? <laughs> you were spot on. That was spot on match. And he's like, Matt, make it happen. And so I scheduled, you know, a tour stop and to come sing at your parish. And he's like, stay at the rectory. Bring the baby. And so there's this one morning when I was there for the, you know, those few days you know, I think maybe there's some seminarian staying there as well. I forget yeah, I how the configuration, time. but um, there was this, you know, private guest room for Mercedes and me, like a little attached sitting area. And so we had enough space and privacy. privacy yeah. yeah. And so I like locked the door to the room. She was sleeping and I really wanted to go on a run real quick, just like around the block. So I brought the baby monitor out and I like gave it to you. I'm like, can you just listen and just text me if you hear any crying so i like go out and go running and i get back in the rectory and like it was fine you like hand me the monitor back you're like you didn't Nothing hear happened. anything yeah, yeah it was, was all like good eating cereal with the monitor yeah she's so she's like stayed asleep fine and then in mass the next day i'm there to sing you're like <laughs> preaching father john comes in at the end he's like helping out with the announcements and he's like so yesterday Matt walks into the kitchen holding a baby monitor, and I'm like, that's something you don't see every day. <laughs> oh, John. And I'm like, I can't believe he's bringing this up right now. But he just made it so, like, like this is a family. This is what we're doing. We, like, we as Holy Cross are serving, and we're welcoming Amanda and her family. And just, like... Supporting life yeah. family, yeah. And, and it was just like, yeah, he's like, you know, Amanda ran out for a run, and then Mercedes slept, and it's great, and there's Mercedes and Amanda now. <laughs> And it was just the way that he set the tone for you to be, to continue being friends with me post ordination Mm -hmm. and to like bring my family into it and bring our ministries together was just beautiful and like such an awesome, funny, perfect example of Holy Cross, you know, and of you laying down your life and, and then getting so much more than you absolutely bargained for. Yeah, so much more. (laughs) All right, so in closing, oh, 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 we have some quotes. This is a huge, this is a jam-packed episode. David, could you read the C.S. Lewis quote for us about the personalities, the real personalities? Yes, uh, there are no real personalities apart from God. Until you have given up yourself to him, you will not have a real self. Sameness is to be found most among the most natural men, not among those who surrender to Christ. How monotonously alike are the great tyrants and conquerors. Uh, all, all, oh, okay, sorry. How monotonous alike all the great tyrants and conquerors have been. How gloriously different are the saints. C.S. Mm-hmm. Lewis. I I found this book mm-hmm. in my son's room because some because your sister gave it to us, David. This is an awesome book. Jamal's like, why are you taking that book from my room again? I'm just, I'm just like, it's. <laughs> a, I think it's more of a family book, actually. It's so beautifully illustrated, and just I've I've been reading these stories to the girls like before they go to sleep. They're you know a couple pages long about these different saints, and man. These saint stories are weird. Some of them, like St. George, they're like, and then St. George, like, slayed the dragon. The girls are like, are there dragons? I'm like, no. 
Maybe it was like a Komodo dragon. I don't know. <laughs> it's, so it's kind of like almost like tall tales about the saints, but based on Hagiography. their... Geography. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Based on their real lives. And it's like their real stories in, in, in such vibrant storytelling. Mm-hmm. But it just strikes me how colorful all of their stories are and how different how different they are like that prayer that you read like some some fell asleep in peace and some were these martyrs yeah. in in this you know agonizing death and yet like they're living the same spirit mm-hmm. and and so there's this there's this unity amongst them but like the dynamism of these stories is like it's crazy and um it's so dynamic and so just an encouragement to those who are listening who are feeling called to lay down their lives in maybe new ways that they haven't before but there's this tug on their heart and they like they know exactly what i'm talking about they're like would you stop bringing that up because i'm trying to ignore it but there Ah. it is i don't know what that tug is but like i I believe that it's It's there right and that it's if you can't shake it it's not going away you keep praying you're trying to change the subject and it's still persisting to trust the Lord with that, to lay down your life because you, Absolutely. yes, you, you lose yourself, but then, but then you gain Christ. You, you gain everything in him and he, and he gives you yourself in ways that you couldn't even imagine. And, uh, well, that, I mean, that point, right. Of from, from Lewis, um, how alike are all the tyrants? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, if if what we're focusing on first is just us, like the the human pieces and our concupiscence, right? All of these different pieces. Mm-hmm. Like then, yeah, that's that's going to all end up to be looking pretty similar. Yeah. You know, it's going to lead us all down a pretty similar path, which um, is boring, really. But if you can trust in God... Lose yourself, not not grasp at those specific things for your own, mm-hmm. but but give them up to God. Let Him take them. He's gonna give them back in fascinating ways that are um, amazing, right? You get to live like these saints, um, who who do these awesome and epic things because of who they are, mm-hmm. right? Because of because of their personalities and because of um, their particular situations right whether they're Mm -hmm. whether Isidore the farmer or um King Wenceslas right like but in they're Mm -hmm. they're doing these amazing things because of who they are because of their situation because they're letting God work through that right they've they've Mm -hmm. died to themselves first and God uses their situations in in glorious ways Mm -hmm. how about we close up with Luke chapter 9 Verse 23 and 24. Do we have that in text, David? All right. And then he said to all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Amen. Amen. Thank you to the Congregation of Holy Cross for allowing Father Matt to be part of this ministry, to travel across the country, to join David and me and our family in the comfort of our own home studio to record We Should Pray. Thank you to my brothers, especially who I've lived with, who uh, hopefully I didn't offend with anything I've said. But uh, Yeah, down the road. You're great. <laughs> uh, thank you also to all of those who support Amanda in her ministry, especially Amanda Vernon patrons. Uh, Amanda Vernon patrons are people who uh, support her in a very specific way and get some pretty awesome uh, rewards and access as well in response. Hey, thanks. Like a new song every Sunday. Awesome. If you would like to hear about those rewards and to become a patron, visit amandavernon.com slash patron. And God bless you. Amen. You want to... May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.